Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. This video is gonna be about my first impressions and initial testing of the inbuilt focus bracketing feature of the Canon R7. I will show you in the menu where you can enable this function and we'll also provide you with a few tips that you might wanna take into consideration when using this feature. I've done two different types of tests. I used my tripod for the majority of the shots, but also attempted to use this feature in the field with a relatively difficult subject to shoot, a jumping spider while hand holding the camera. The R7 is also equipped with an inbuilt algorithm that can automatically align and stack individual layers and create a so-called depth composite. I will be comparing these results, these depth composites to Photoshop, to Luminar Neo's focus stacking AI and also to a specialized focus stacking software called Zirin Stacker. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started and find out those results. First, let me show you where this focus bracketing feature is located. You will find this in the first menu with the camera icon and you will have to scroll all the way to the sixth page where you can enable it. The number of shots will allow you to set the number of images you want the camera to automatically take in a single sequence. I used 15 and 35 shots in my tests as that seemed sufficient enough for the maximum level of magnification which is one to one on the Canon 100mm macro. Our next option is about setting the focus increment, which is not well defined and will take some trial and error, some experimenting. This depends on the lens you use, the focal length, the working distance can have an effect on it as well, and the aperture and the actual magnification ratios will influence the outcome too. I tried it with both narrow and wider increments at 1 to 1 magnification and if you want to err on the safe side I recommend you overshoot and go for narrower increments to ensure that you cover all the focal planes and to maximize depth of field. The next menu point is about exposure smoothing which balances out the exposures throughout the sequence in case the ambient light changes. I had this set to enabled as well. The last two options pertain to the inbuilt stacking algorithm which automatically aligns and blends the layers with the crop function enabled, it removes the artifacting which usually happens around the corners so it will apply a slight crop to your image. Before showing you how I did the controlled studio tests, I wanted to put up a list of lenses that support this relatively new feature by Canon. I think they will be gradually adding more and more to this list so keep an eye out for potential updates from Canon. My test shots indoors were of relatively large salt crystals. The first thing that you should do is set everything to manual mode, which will provide you with maximum flexibility in terms of exposure control, then make sure that you enable image stabilization if you are hand holding your camera and disable it when you use a tripod. The next step I did for these shots was dialing in the maximum magnification of 1 to 1 by rotating the focusing ring towards the minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters in this instance. After that I tried to find the closest point of our subject that I wanted to be in focus and switch back to autofocus. This can be a rather tricky part as sometimes the autofocus will start hunting so you need to ensure that the focus point is properly set. I myself could have done a better job as well, which you will see. So once you have set the initial focus point, you can start shooting the sequence by hitting the shutter button and the R7 will start taking the previously set number of images in a row, then we'll create the depth composite at the end when a busy sign will pop up on the screen. This can take some time, especially if you shoot deeper stacks. In our first test, we ended up taking 15 images and here is the depth composite that the camera did. I'm gonna briefly show you now how I did the stacking process in Photoshop. You need to go to the file menu, then click on scripts, then load files into stack, find the images in the folder that you want stacked. Once you have selected every one of them, hit open, then tick the box where it says attempt to automatically align source images, then hit OK. Now Photoshop will be making some adjustments and align the individual layers. Once that's done, then you need to select every layer by holding down shift and then clicking on either the top or bottom layer first, then scroll up or down depending on which one you had selected initially. Once all layers are selected, which is indicated by the gray color, go to the edit menu, then select auto blend layers, then select stack images and make sure that the seamless tones and colors and the content aware field options are ticked, then click OK and wait a little while for the final stacked image. 
The second stacking process I did was in Luminar Neo. This was much more simple as all I had to do after importing the images is to select them and drag them into the focus stacking box. Here you can select the reference image. For this test, I just left it at the default, which was automatically picked and also take the remove chromatic aberration option to eliminate any color fringing, which isn't a big issue with this lens anyway. The third program that I used was Zerene Stacker. Here you need to click on the file, then add files, select all images, then hit open. I've got more detailed tutorials on using each of these softwares and I will leave links in the description if you wanna learn more about them. Then go to stack in the menu and select my preferred method, which is the align and stack all PMAX, the pyramid method. Once the stacking process starts, the depth of field gradually increases on the right side as more and more images are added to the final composite. Let's have a look at the final results now. Here is the depth composite, which seems to be the worst out of the four. Even at first glimpse, it struggled a fair bit adding the layers towards the end of the sequence, and also it looks less sharp, and a few layers seem to be missing in the foreground as well, where you can see the fabric. Photoshop's version is uncropped, the colors are slightly different, a bit on the warmer side, but it looks definitely sharper, especially at the front. Luminar Neo's results were quite impressive in the first test shot, and I was quite surprised by the quality and the high level of discernible textural detail in the rocks, but my absolute favorite was definitely Zirin Stacker's final frame, which seemed to be able to retain the most amount of detail, both in the fore and the background. In my second test shot indoors, I placed the camera on a tripod, which is recommended for maximum stability, as that makes the alignment and blending process that much more effective. I also used a constant light source to ensure proper and consistent exposure at a specific color temperature throughout the sequence and decided to take 35 images this time with increments set to the widest just to see what kind of results we'd get at one-to-one -one magnification with this subject. Here is the auto composite done in camera and the visibly more detailed shot that I got using Zirian Stacker. Especially around the edges of the salt crystals, you can see much more intricate details. And also if you look closely at the threads of the fabric, it clearly managed to retain much more information and did a much more efficient and effective job overall. After my studio tests, I went outside and tried my luck with a jumping spider I had spotted on a leaf of our Swiss cheese plant. Taking stack shots while hand holding the camera can be rather difficult, especially when the subject keeps moving around and to top it off I also had to deal with wind, which made it extremely frustrating at times, but managed to grab three semi-decent stacks in the end. Here is the first sequence I took, I was actually quite surprised by the quality of the in-camera composite shot, you can even see the compound eyes of this extremely tiny fly, which would have been only a few millimeters. The contrast and the colors of the image we got in Photoshop looks even better, especially if we zoom in. What was quite surprising to me is that Luminar Neo struggled with this particular sequence and couldn't align the layers and created this weird but cool looking image with a kind of ghosting effect. Zirin Stacker's shot was pretty good too. You can see that it struggled a little more aligning the layers and for a final edit, we would have had to crop in substantially to remove the ad effecting, especially on the left side. Our second test shot was a quasi failure as our hungry little jumping spider moved quite a bit during this sequence as she was devouring that fly. The auto composite only used a few shots for this final image and I think it essentially eliminated those that were unusable. Photoshop stack looked once again pretty good in terms of sharpness, detail and contrast and Luminar Neo was pretty much the same I'd say. Zirin stacker once again struggled with this stack as the layers were all over the place. Zirin really shows its strength with much deeper and more well executed stacks and unfortunately this wasn't the case in this instance. With our third test shot from a different oblique angle, the depth composite did a decent enough job in my opinion once again, Photoshop was better in terms of the overall depth of field as expected and I'd say my favorite was definitely Luminar Neo here with the overall look in terms of detail, micro contrast. And unfortunately, as this stack was quite all over the place, Zirin was unable to properly align the layers with the default settings that I used. 
overall, I had quite a bit of fun taking these test shots and it can definitely be useful, but I'd mainly recommend it with static subjects where you have more control and also if you can use a tripod and a constant light source that will help you create some decent stacks in the end. Creating handheld stacked images with this function can be quite frustrating unless you can lock in your elbow and rest the camera or at least partially rest the camera on something. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and also if you're new to my channel and you love macro photography and nature photography, don't forget to subscribe. You might also want to check out these videos next. One is a focus stacking tutorial and the other one is my recent review of the Nisi NM200S macro focusing rail. Thanks again for watching and catch you all very soon in the next one.